Well, we'll please bring the Pennsylvania County Service Authority regular meeting to order. Um, roll call, please. You gonna do that, Kevin? You got that? Mr. Davis? Present. Mr. Douglas? Present. Mr. Palmer? Here. Mr. Ingram? Here. Dr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Scarris? Here. Mr. Warren? I'm here. Thank you. Are there any revisions or additions to the agenda? Hearing none, uh, motion for approval of the agenda, please. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Right hand. Um, consent agenda. Con I'm sorry. Consent agenda. Um, so moved. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, would there be any citizens? Well, no, I'm sir. sorry. Um, there are no signatures. Sir, would you, would you um, <coughs> read, please? We can dispense with reading that paragraph because we have nobody signed up for the hearing of citizens. All right, moving right along. Presentations. Um, presentations, um, Mr. Adcock, please. In Southern California. Mm. Charles is one of our water and sewer operations technicians and has been employed with us since 2016. To make some of us feel old, me included, uh, Charles graduated from high school in, in 2000. Um, <laughs> He attended the University of Southern, uh, Southern California at Riverside and, is trained and has training in water distribution, cross-connection control, and backflow prevention. He previously worked for water utility companies in California, the city of Danville, and Rockingham County, North Carolina, and we value his, his diverse experience. As an operations technician, Charles' duties include installing water and sewer taps, repairing leaks, investigating service issues, and performing maintenance and troubleshooting of our pump stations. Mm. He is also our main backup for doing misutility locations, water sampling, and equipment operation. Charles, even though he's uh, fairly, fairly young, he, uh, he has four children ranging in age from five to 15. Uh, so he, and one of them is, is not his, will be his uh, uh, stepchild. So I'll give him, I'll clarify that a little bit. So I see we're trying to do the math there. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> so he stays pretty busy at home. Uh, when he does find some free time, he enjoys music and getting outdoors, uh, preferably getting outdoors without a shovel in his hand. Mm. Uh, and I recall he used to be a pretty skilled woodworker. As a side note of interest, Charles's father is a current member of the Danville City School Board, and his mother is also very involved in the local community mm. in, in Danville. Charles is very easy to get along with. He's committed to getting a job done right, and we are happy to have him as a Public Works team member. Please join me in thanking Charles for his service to Pennsylvania County. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Could I make a statement? Yes, sir. You said you're Southern California? Southern California, Riverside. Okay, if, uh, if, if, if you're getting water real good up in that Dust Bowl of San Joaquin Valley, we really can use your talent here. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an easy task to get water out there, particularly. It's I know that yep. thing is the dry, one of the driest places I've been in my life. So uh, anyway, we're glad to have you all the way from the CA. This is going to be more comfortable. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. McWilliams, we thank you for your service. You. All right. Thank you, Charles. All right, moving right along on the PS. PCSA audit presentation, um, Robinson, Farmer, and Cox. Thank you all for having me. Uh, my name is Scott Wickham. I was partner in charge of the service authority audit this year. Uh, it was our first year with the authority. Um, it was actually a six month audit. So. Uh, kind of hard to, to gauge the numbers as far as what the income statement where they landed. Uh, but I'll give you a, a brief overview of the audit and kind of a summary. Uh, we 
wanted to get the, the six month audit to get aligned with the county so that the numbers will jive a lot better in, in the combined county report as well um, as the entities are related. Uh, but overall, the audit went really well. I'll, I'll go through a, a few high points in the service authority report. Uh, as I mentioned, that was a six month report. But on page one and two is the independent auditor's report. And this discusses the materiality of the financial statements. You all have an unmodified clean opinion. Um, there are a few additional paragraphs in there noting that uh, there were a few minor restatements to beginning balances um, and that the audit was a six month audit and not a full year audit. Um, but otherwise it's a clean, unmodified, good opinion on the six months we audited there. Um, as always, Kim did a great job on the MDNA here. Um, a little brief summary. I'm sure writing the MDNA was quite a challenge as, as trying to compare uh, analyticals of a year versus six months uh, to compare items fr from the prior audit to this audit. On page seven, exhibit one, this is the balance sheet on the full accrual basis of accounting. So this includes uh, everything the authority had um, and everything the authority owed. Um, something that jumps out at me looking at it compared to other service authorities. Uh, there's just not really any debt. Um, a lot of service authorities do have quite a bit of debt to g offset that infrastructure. So um, financially, the authority is in pretty good shape um, to not have bonded debt on, on their balance sheet there. Uh, you do have the net pension liability and that OPEB liability. Actually, the, you all have a net pension asset uh, and a net OPEB liability uh, as resulting from the um, county's retirement or health insurance plan um, as well as the group life plan. On page eight, exhibit two, you have the income statement. And as you can see there towards the bottom on the accrual basis of accounting, it was a decline about $136,000. Um, but of that, about 350,000 is depreciation. Um, so it was, a, it was a plus cash year. Um, and if you look at exhibit three, the statement of cash flows, um, I always like to look at the top piece of this, uh, the operating activities, uh, that first little group there. And you can see the, the, just the operations um, provided a, a decline of $82,000 in cash this year, um, but with the grants um, and the investments and purchases of the, the long-term CDs that the authority did have, um, you had an increase of $1.6 million. Uh, in general, on, I like to look at the Exhibit 3 cash flow as well for the, the middle there to see the inflow in cash, um, but the authority did have some CDs that were considered investments because they were through a broker. Um, so that changes that, that picture a little bit. Um, but overall, the authority is in really good shape. All right, I'll move to the back of the report here on page 49. This is the gas report, and this talks about the compliance requirements with government auditing standards and the state audit requirements. Um, this is a clean report, a good report, so uh, no findings noted for the authority. Um, as I mentioned, there weren't any material findings reported. We did have uh, three recommendations that were issued outside of the report. Uh, just some, some best practices and some things that happened throughout the year. Um, as we took over the audit, um, we looked at some of the prior review and processes and things. Um, and we, we would like to have seen a little more um, documentation of oversight. For inquiry, there was some oversight happening, um, but always getting that initial on the things and and that kind of thing, so we can verify that oversight um, was one thing we recommended. And, and those things were, were um, adjusted as the, the county finance uh, took over, so there was not a finding reported in the report for that. Um, we've worked with the IRS before, and, and they generally re require the board to be paid through um, payroll. Um, they deemed the, the board to be uh, employees for that, that purposes. And then there's an old um, requirement for authorities to advertise their financial condition uh, in the newspaper. I believe that you could probably advertise it on, on the website and cover yourself, uh, but the Code of Virginia still does uh, refer to a newspaper article. Mm -hmm. uh, essentially to let the public know that there is a, a full audited financial statement they can get access to if they want it, is, is it the idea there. Um, but overall, the audit went really well. Um, I'm, I'm happy to, to get the audit synced up. I feel, I feel um, good to have the year ends all aligned for the, the county audit. Um, and it, it was a challenge. The first year audits are always a challenge to 
to gain an understanding and build that permanent file for all the records there. But um, overall, it was, was really, went really well, and I appreciate all the hard work from the staff. So, Any questions? All right. Does it, does it require a motion? Uh, no. All right. We thank you, Mr. Wickham. Thank you. Appreciate you. All right. New business, Mr. Adcock, please. <clears throat> yes, sir. This uh, is regarding an EDA Public Works funding application. Uh, back in June, we were made aware of some potential funding opportunities through the EDA's uh, Economic Adjustment Assistance Program through the CARES Act. We, pro we proposed a few of the projects and sent those to the West Piedmont Planning District Commission, who is the go-between for uh, coordinating any potential funding through the EDA. After discussion and a review of the projects, it was recommended that two of the projects might be good candidates for funding through the EDA Disaster Resiliency Funding or the Public Works Program, but not through the CARES Act funding. Uh, the proposed projects, none of the proposed projects were determined to be good candidates through the CARES Act because of, uh, with, without a strong connection to the, the pandemic impacts. Um, the suggested projects are outlined in the attached uh, PER that was, I think was forwarded to you. Um, and this came from our 2019 study where we studied all of our pump stations. And what the uh, engineer did as far as part of this application is pull out the top five, which had a poor uh, resiliency rating and in addition to that, uh, one of those pump stations was our Brockway pump station. Instead of re renovating that pump station, what we were determined to do was to uh, extend a gravity line up from the Cane Creek, the existing Cane Creek outfall line up to the back of Brockway and pick them up on a, a gravity system and completely do away with that um, pump station. That line would also serve a, uh, a potential economic development lot um, this beside Brockway that used to be a, it was a project uh, identified called Project Tire. And I talked to Matt earlier today and there's still some interest in that lot, which uh, if, if you know, if, if you're on K Kentuck Road, you know where all the warehouses are on your right, that lot is kind of behind that. And there's been some interest in that. So this would potentially serve that, that lot as well. So with, with those five pump stations uh, and also the Brockway, line extension uh, the total project cost uh, with a 15 percent contingency and also with um, with engineering survey and all the other uh, add-ons is is about 2.5 million the the application requires a 50 percent match to get that so what we had looked at doing with these with these pump station projects is is tackling about two of them every year with our capital improvements program. And actually, we had already started engineering on the Brockway extension. So the engineering has been done, basically uh, about 80% of that project has been done. Um, so what, uh, I guess this would cover about five or six years of capital improvements and allow us, if, if we're successful, and allow us to get 50% uh, of that funding done. So it require, you know, if you look at their estimate, the requirement would be over a million dollars from the service authority. But I think these estimates are, are very high and include some things uh, like legal representation, which I think, you know, the county has the ability to do that in-house. The surveying has a lot of the surveying engineering work on the Brockway system has been done and has been paid for uh, previously. So. I, if we want to move forward with this application, we need a resolution from the board stating that the 50% match is available and unencumbered. So what I would like to, if, if, if that's something that the board wants to proceed with, we'll come back at the next meeting in January with a um, resolution that you can approve that will go with the application. And I don't know that we'll be successful, but uh, you know, the, talking to the West Piedmont Planning District Commission you know th these 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 monies are available they're on a road they're on a revolving basis for applications so that we can get in very quickly and i think that uh with all that's going on with the pandemic there's probably not a lot of uh, app applicants right now so we we have a pretty good chance of being successful 
So with that, I would, uh, I guess, just uh, entertain approval of uh, drafting a resolution to move forward with that. Mr. Chairman, I'll put that in the motion. Second. All right, it's been probably motioned and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, Mr. Adcock. Um, item two. <laughs> item two. Yes, sir. A million dollars. I think item two is. Wow. Is that the utility <coughs> shutoff update? Dr. Miller. Yes, sir. Back up one second. Yes, sir. Um, we'll just Talk about it. All we have just approved. For clarity sake, just, just a resolution is that we're going to review a resolution. We could vote not to proceed at the next meeting. Is that correct, Mr. Hunt? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. It requires adoption by this board of resolution for us to apply that says we have a 50% unencumbered match. Yep. So we have a month to get you any more information you want, and we have a, we're going to draft that resolution, and we can have a, a more hearty. Uh, and vigorous discussion about it in January, if you want. Uh, and a lot of that, a lot of the information is included in, in that PER. If you have any questions as far as what uh, what we're proposing, and and we put all these projects in there, but it doesn't have to go in like that. If we if we decide that we want to pare it down somewhat, then we can pare it down somewhat. But um, we 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 put the ones out there that we felt were most needy. And it have the best opportunity for some some potential funding. So if there's any questions on any of the items, I'll be happy to 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 take that now, so that I can better prepare mm -hmm. for next month's meeting. All right. I'd be ready to answer any anticipated questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that narrow enough for you? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now I know where we head. Just muddy as the water. <laughs> Item two. Okay, my is that the utility shut off update? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Yes, sir. Okay. So back in uh, the October meeting, we had discussed that there were some potential uh, uh, items coming down from the governor that may impact the uh, ability to cut off customers for non-payment. So the recent uh, budget bill amendment. Uh, prohibits municipal utilities from disconnecting service to residential customers for non-payment of bills or fees until the governor determines that the economic or public health conditions have improved or such that the prohibition does not need to be in place or until at least 60 days after the such declared state of emergency ends. So we do not have the ability right now to cut off anybody for non-payment. Uh, in addition to that, we must offer any, any customers that are having trouble a COVID-19 relief payment plan. And they dictate that that payment plan uh, has to be a minimum period of six months and offer up to 24 months payback and that the customer determines the sustainability and affordability of that. We don't- Holy smoke. Yeah, we, <clears throat> don't, uh, we don't declare that. We don't, uh, <laughs> at least it has to be within 24 months. We mm. do have that max end. Um, so they tell us what they can pay. <laughs> yes. And they have the ability to come back and renegotiate that at any time too. <laughs> Outside, after, 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 after we do the first one, yeah. Okay. They can come back and yeah, get a loan for a million dollars and pay it back one dollar at a time. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I can do, you know. That's crazy. The good thing is we don't have a, we don't have a, a, a lot Boy, uh, like that. that are really, really bad off. You know, we, it, they, because they're mostly residential customers, they don't have the, they, they haven't had the time to really build up a large balance. You're gonna have your habituals, the people that don't yes. pay them every you know, I know that. He's and they the worst account, three or four thousand mm -hmm. dollars? Um, probably, a little, probably a little less than that. Okay, yep. so. We're not, no huge commercial accounts. No, no. And some of those accounts. There's no really end in sight, but when the accrual is gonna stop. So that three thousand would be 10, so we get a chance to yeah, but the vaccine's on the way. It's going to end. <laughs> oh, That's where socialism kicks in, so yeah. we're going to be quite covered. So part of that, and this moves into the second item, is uh, 
Right. So th this dovetails right into item number three, which he's going to talk about right yeah, now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we made application to, so we got notification and at the end of November that there was going to be some potential relief monies available through COVID. So we had, we had to put in an application uh, in about a week's time to the municipal Re utility relief program. Uh, and based on that, we were notified on December the 7th that we were awarded $13,773.73. So we, we put in uh, what we thought were our current outstanding. We had to get, give a 60-day outstanding. We had to give a 30-day outstanding. And based on all the responses that the, um, that the Department of Housing and Urban Development got, they, uh, and the money that they had available, they allocated that to, the, to all the applicants. So we were awarded this $13,773. Um, the award letter I sent was attached to it. There's a very tight timeline though. The funds must be used by 1231, but I learned from a, a conference call last week, late last week, that we have until Jan end of January to collect attestments from the customer. So the customer has to come in to us and attest in a form that has been specified mm -hmm. that they are having trouble paying their bill based on the, uh, the pandemic. And if they do that, then we can allocate this money to, to their account. It has to be allocated um, from monies that were due from March the 1st, 2020, through the end of the year, December 30th time period. Um, and we must prioritize the assistance for the customers with accounts that are over 60 days. And then if we have any money left, it has to go to the accounts that are over 30 days. So as part of that agreement, the service authority as an as a, still currently as an independent entity has to partner with um, a county, which is a good thing that we're, we're set up like we are now, it's just pretty easy partnering. But uh, we need to, to approval that we will accept the grant funds <clears throat> and apply to the identified accounts, I guess from this board. And then uh, Vaden, I was thinking that we probably need to add to the work session uh, that the county will accept that partnership agreement if we were going to move forward with that. To, to that tonight? Uh, yeah, because it's, okay. I mean, yeah. our timeline is, is, okay. is um, has to be done by that. And I hope that, so we, we sent out a mailer that went out, uh, was supposed to go out today to those customers that were in arrears. So we hope we get some response and I'll probably have staff call some of the ones at the top of the list, but I needed to know first that the board was willing to accept this money. And any money we don't use, we have to send it back by the end of January. What do, could we possibly use the whole amount? I mean, do we have that much delinquency? <clears throat> uh, pro we're close to it, but I, but probably not. Okay. You can't bank any for future delinquency. No, if we don't, uh, that's what, uh, which was good that they allow us to uh, take, At least take those that. attestments yeah. through January, right. but. If they don't come to us through January, it's, it, you then we have to send them back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and I don't expect, you know, with the, uh, since we haven't heard anything on the other COVID-19 monies, I don't expect mm -hmm. they get an extension. Um, so it's it's kind of a, it's good that they, that they allocated it, but it's bad that we don't have any time to, to really uh, to try to get it to the people that need it. And then if the people that need it don't desire to come in and make that attestation, then they can't get the money. Mm -hmm. We just can't, we just can't do it right. to the ones that are, that are late. They have to agree to come in and sign. So I, does this board need to make a motion that they, uh, accept the funds and, and agree to go into agreement with the county? Yeah, why don't we just do that? Question. Yes, sir. For those customers um, who may be in the arrears, does your organization advertise the fact that the funds are available or is that upon the citizen to find out? We, we, will, uh, we will advertise that. So we did, we, um, identified those customers and we through our billing uh, billing 
company that does our billing for us. We ask them to send a mailer to those customers uh, and with that information. And then we'll also go ahead and put it on the website. And uh, we'll, you know, maybe I'll get uh, Caleb to work with me on putting it on Facebook as well. Okay. And, and some of the other uh, social media. Mr. Chairman. Good. Um, do they have to come into the office to do these <clears throat> attestations? No, no. But they do have to do the attestation. Well, they have to do it in front of a notary, or are they able to do it at home? Can you do it online? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out a way. I think they given can, this. Yeah, I think they could do it do it online. Um, I'd have to go back and research exactly okay. how, but I don't think it requires a, notif a, okay. a notary on the signature. I just don't want it to be a barrier to yeah. people applying. So we need a motion to accept this. Uh, the money and then uh, and to partner with the county as the financial uh, go between I guess the, the money will go to the county and the county will send it to the service authority I make a motion that we enter to accept the grant apply for the grant and accept it if uh, given and that we partner with Pennsylvania County as our county representative to, to coordinate these efforts and that every opportunity to be given to those that meet the criteria including phone calls and personal emails to those folks a lot of time that's snail mail in today's world kind of gets yeah. passed over so. and we did uh, we did so we could part of our identification process we could pull accounts that so you know we can say all right give me the ones that are 60 days in arrears that have uh, that live in Chatham that so we can kind of narrow it down and we did we did that and said the ones that have email accounts email addresses with their accounts and that knock it down to about 10 so we're still working on people giving us their email addresses it's just it's not something that is really frequently done it, it, you know it, it's something that we're still working on well, it seems like it would be worthwhile for us to recoup some funds that we may not get if we rely on them to pay so why why do we not have staff making phone calls? Yeah. All right. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All aye. Any opposed? Motion's passed. Thank you, Mr. Adcock. Yes, sir. All right. Are there any matters from the authority members? I just have one question, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, and this is uh, for Mr. Hunt, I guess. Um, where are we, are we moving along in the dissolving of this board so we can just have one board, one meeting? Uh, we, we are. Our goal was July, and I've got the documents drafted, and first thing in the new year, we're going to officially punch that trigger and uh, wade through that process. Right. Are there any other matters regarding from the board? All right. Motion for adjournment. I make that motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mo uh, meeting is adjourned. <laughs>